When we had last left Andreas, he had explored all of the Abbey, and now all that was left was to go back to the scriptorium, where things had changed significantly, not only in the physical world, but also in the working world. Yes, uh, Illuminata had become Mother Illuminata with the passing of Cecilia. And also, there he picked up a book for none other than little Magdalene and Klaus, who would hopefully see that she would enjoy it. And, speaking of which, at Klaus's place, they met and sort of forgave one another, or Klaus forgave Andreas, really, for not riding, and for during all of the hardships that Klaus had endured. And also, there was a visiting couple at Klaus's place, who one of whom went into labor. Now it was time to go to the town commons and check out this cool festival that was getting ready to be made underway. This is Pentiment. Welcome back. All right. What do you think? Who will die if there is a killing? Do we think they get killed on the day of the festival? Maybe? I feel like maybe that would be... Well, I don't know. That would be very... extra. <laughs> right? Okay. Let's go over to the commons. Fuck it. Let's just go immediately there. I want to see. Oh. Everyone seems to be working hard for the bonfire tonight. The commons look festive, decorated like this. It does look very nice. Look at all the flowers, Master. And the bonfire is huge. Oh, look. There's Klaus and little Magdalene. Oh gosh, look at them. <laughs> wow, they're really going to... Yeah. Huh. Wow, that's so cool. How's the fire coming? Those logs work out all right for you, Endress? Otto. Coming along as it finishes, it's all in place, Otto. Man, everybody's answering. Good, good. All right, everyone. Remember, after the bonfire tonight, we celebrate as usual. We will gather in the woods, and the women will collect herbs as tradition demands. Otto, the abbot has forbidden harvesting in the forest. Please, for everyone's sake, reconsider your actions. Thank you, Father, but the abbot's order goes against God's law. The forest belongs to all of us, as do all its game and fowl and fish. He cannot claim ownership over that which the Lord gave us to hold in common. No, I'm sorry, Father. We'll proceed as planned. Tassing has never let anything get in the way of St. John's customs, as long as I can remember. We won't start now. And remember, tomorrow I will show you proof that as sure as the sun turns round the earth, God and our saints are with us. Oh, good day, Andreas. I forgot what, what kind of voice I gave to Wojslav. Hello, Brother Wojslav. You looked upset at Otto's announcement. Is everything all right? Otto is becoming more aggressive in his defiance of the abbot. Father Gerno will not take this news well. The abbot doesn't like the festivities? Well, who's telling? How could the abbot stop them? He can't exactly chase them all out of the woods himself. Well... Who's telling? <laughs> Let's say that. Otto just announced his plan in the commons. The ta and Tassing is a small town. Of course the abbot will hear about it. Hmm, fair point, but why is the abbot so angry about it? Didn't you just hear Father Thomas, Andreas? The abbot declared the woods off limits. Anyway, it's not for me to say. I'm sure the abbot will tell you more. He sent me with an invitation for you to dine with him tonight. I'm sure the father will want to discuss the situation over supper. Of course, I'll attend. Thank you, Brother Wojslav. Well, I suppose I can attend? <laughs> You're kidding. What does the abbot think he can pry out of me now? 
You're kidding. What does the abbot think he can pry out of me now? I'd watch your tone around the abbot, Andres. Will you go or not? Fine, I'll attend. Does the invitation extend to Caspar as well? I'm sorry, Andreas, but Father Abbot has asked you to come to his house alone. Oh my god. Caspar is going to get killed. <laughs> Don't be fuming just yet, Caspar. You might die. Please tell the Abbot I'll see him this evening. I feel like more kids have died in this game than any other game I've ever played combined. <laughs> you know? Well, I guess I'll see what all the fuss is about. I'll meet you back at the Golden Hand after dinner, all right? Can I help set up the festival decorations while you're with the abbot? Yes, but be back before sundown, all right? Yes. Thank you, Master. I'll see you later. All right. Man, time to eat again. Jeez, we should have investigated our... Oh, no, we, can... we still can. All right. Who are these folks here? Oh shit, look at them dance. Oh dude, it looks weird and cool. Oh, it's very weird and cool. Holy shit, I love it. Look at this. Oh my god, it looks creepy but cool. Oh, look at this fucking long dude in the back. Who is this? I wonder who everyone is. I can't really tell. Huh. Alright. Let's inspect this. This bonfire is much simpler than the one in Nuremberg, but it's pretty all the same. Anton and Carl. Hey Carl, you got a soup spoon in your hat. Hello, Andreas. Anton? Hello, Master Mahler. I don't think I know him at all. Brigida. Hello, Andreas. Hey, Till. Dude, could you imagine if it was Till who was the, like, mastermind? Dude, I would fucking love that. Holy shit, I hope it's Till. Right? Fuck, I don't know how it would be. Because he's, like, not within the age range and everything that I would have suspected. And he said at the beginning that he, like, was just learning to read and or write. Hello, Master Mahler. Okay. Anybody else? Werner. Hello, Andreas. Kaspar. Master Andreas, you'd best not keep the abbot waiting. Go on, we'll meet up after supper. All right, don't get into trouble. Yeah, don't get murdered. Ellipses. <laughs> okay. Give the kid advice not to get murdered. Proceeds to immediately get murdered. <laughs> Andreas? Let's check Central Town. Look at all the little decorations everywhere, too. I love it. Oh, Ulrich. Not partaking? Or busy working for it, I guess. God bless you, Andreas. Anna? Gret? Yeah. Same, same. Fun to see the little decorative differences and everything, though. Right? Okay. Should we go into the Steinhours and see if anything updated here? Especially with... Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Agnes? Hello, Andreas. <laughs> Sorry. Just came to, uh... Have a look. <laughs> hey, Lucky. Good evening, Andreas. Okay. Fair enough. Should we check Northtown real, real fast? Maybe. Oh, none of the old-timers were here, right? Attilia and, um... Ill Peter were not present at the bonfiring, I don't think. Were they? At least not during the speech. Seems a little peculiar. Okay, anything over here? Hmm. Nope. Nothing. All right, over here. Head on down, central town. Should we go over and check by the Gertners? I think so. Just see what's up, if anything. Okay. 
there. Oh, Big Yorg. Oh, we can actually talk. Hello, Andreas. Hello again, Yorg. Sorry about dinner the other night. Dad, uh, got a little heated. He's just trying to keep his dignity. I understand. Caspar didn't mean to insult your family. Peter's a stubborn old man. Right. <laughs> just one. I don't know why. I Look, I saw it underlined without a dotted underline. I just felt compelled to check it. You know, I, I don't know why. It felt like, you know, I had to do it to, to make sure it was dotted. He's just trying to keep his dignity. I understand. Thanks, Andreas. Dad's always been able to provide for us, but now... Well, things are different now. But that's why Otto's making his speeches, and Klaus is printing the twelve articles. Change is coming to Tassing, Andreas. May the winds of fortune blow your way, Jorg. Do you really think you can make a difference? I hope you're right, for your sake. Let's be really optimistic, why not? May the winds of fortune blow your way, Jorg. Thanks. I'll see you later, Andreas. Until then. What's up, Peter? You got anything to say? Hello, Andreas. No. Clara? Hello? Ursula? Hello? Little Peter? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Same as usual. Let's head over here. Good, good, good. And then, let's go on over this way. You know what would be really fucking sad? What would be really fucking good and sad? Wipe out their farm. Next act, they're not even there. Holy shit. Okay. Hey, Veronica. Okay, hello. Let's go over this way. Check out Atilia's. And then I guess we'll just go straight up for... Oh, nothing. Maybe we go through the woods, just in case there's anything of interest. Hey, Martin. Oh, just saying hello. Okay. Sure. Let's head up and over. There we go. Atelia may well be at the Lady of the Labyrinth. You don't think there is actually a labyrinth here, do you? Maybe that's what's under the ruins, is that there's a secret labyrinth? And that's what all the, like, labyrinthine references are for. And that's, like, how someone gets around. The killer. They know of the labyrinth. Hmm. Maybe. A secret underground labyrinth? I don't know. Maybe that's too... fantasy. <laughs> oh, Smokey! You actually will say something. Evening, Master Mahler. You're not taking part in the festivities? I came to ask you the same. I didn't see you at the bonfire. I wanted to have a walk and clear my head. Hey, they said that he stinks, right? You don't think it's him, huh? And somehow he knows really well how to write? It's entirely possible. Right? Because he does, like... He's a lot um, more educated and... He just knows more shit, formal or otherwise, than people seem to believe. Maybe it is him. Hmm. Maybe it's totally fucking old Smokey. Right? And the smell. The smell is a big giveaway. Right? Because there was also... It was the herbs, but also the, like, brimstone or whatever, right? He would have, like, a sort of burnt smell. Maybe not necessarily brimstone, but that may be, like, hyperbole on behalf of the... You know, intense situation. Hmm. Smokey may be up to something. I came to ask you the same. I didn't see you at the bonfire. I imagine it'd be a great chance to gather gossip. Ha! Plenty of gossip to go around if one keeps their eyes open on the forest tonight. It's an enchanted evening. As for your question... I get enough fire and smoke as it is. <laughs> Decent folk don't like to associate with my kind. Even as they like the charcoal, they hate the burner. Other than Endris, he occasionally comes by, but I guess he has to keep good relations for his trade. 
People avoid you even on a night such as this? People are fools. People avoid you even on a night such as this? Well, fine. They're not as bad, usually, as usually. But truth be told, I don't really care. I've made my peace with the matter. For me, it's a night like most others. I prefer staying sober and observing the townsfolk. Easier to get all the gossip for the year to come, you know? It's such an in interesting dichotomy. His sort of, like, loneliness that he's come to terms with and the self-imposed loneliness of Amelie, you know? I wonder if they'll ever discuss one another in some way. Besides, I reckon I'm growing too old for mischief. Best let others run around in their silly costumes. I think you still have some youth in you. You're not one for traditions? Ah, you still got some youth in you, Smokey. <laughs> like the sun rises it to its highest point every year, so my back grows ever more crooked. Ah, but I appreciate you coming by. I wish you a pleasant evening, Master Mahler. Until later. Until then. Okay. Let's head on over here. Hmm. Should we check these out, too? Maybe? Nah. I don't think anything will come of it. Fuck it. We're already at the waterfall. We may as well do a quick run through. Right. This is the issue, is that it's so quick to, like, move between scenes, I don't mind doing it. <laughs> Even though it does kind of, like, take up a little time. There we are. Good. Okay, back to the forest. And then I guess we'll head over to the abbey, right? Okay, and then up this way. So where are we eating at? At the... probably at the abbot's house, right? Let's check our map. Yeah, abbot house. Gotcha. Okay, let's do it. There we are. And up we go. Good. Anyone else in here or just scare now? Just scare now. Hey. God bless you, Andreas. I'm glad to see you received my invitation. Are you ready to eat? Yes. Good. Oh, I like this setup. Andreas, thank you for coming to dinner. I will admit, I was surprised to receive your invitation, Father, but I'm pleased to come. I thought you didn't ever want me want to see me at Kearsaw again, Father. What changed? Let's let's bring it out. What changed? Yes, well, the Lord calls us to forgiveness, even when that might be difficult. I think it's high time we reconciled, Master Mahler. Please sit, and we may and we will pray together. Bless us, O Lord, and these your gifts which we are about to receive from your bounty. Lord, direct each of us here toward your wisdom, prudence, and guidance in your fu in our fu future actions. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brother Warslav was indeed prompt in delivering my message. I'm surprised you, Dane, dropped by at all. You have done quite well for yourself, after all. It is good to see that your time at Kearsaw was not squandered. You even look the part of the famous artist now. What have you been doing in recent years after leaving such a mess in Tassing? The city council did approve me as a master artist in Nuremberg. You'll be pleased to hear. I have a commission of Mary and Christ waiting for me in Nuremberg. But my patron wants to keep adding more of his associates in. I'm dreading going back to it. I spent most of my time doing commissions for various lords in London. What do you care about my successes, father? Maybe he wants money or something? Hmm. Maybe that's it. He's trying to butter me up for some, for some like, favor. Huh. What do we want to do? Patrons keep associate. They keep adding more. Or let's yeah. Let's say let's mention that we're dreading going back to it. I want that to be clear. 
I have a commission of Marion Christ waiting for me in Nuremberg, but my patron wants to keep adding more of his associates in. I'm dreading going back to it. Surely the Lord will grant you the strength to succeed such a difficult endeavor. Right. Why did you really invite me here, Father? In truth, I had hoped to discuss the rising tensions between the Abbey and the townspeople. I'd like to clarify the situation for you, Andreas. Please, Abbot, I'm all ears. Clarify what, exactly? Of course, just like you clarified that Piero was guilty all those years ago. And why? Why do you care? Why do you care to clarify it to me? I'm not even gonna be here that many more days. Clarify what, exactly? I simply want to ensure you understand the circumstances objectively from all angles. I believe you've only heard from one side of the issue, Andreas. Otto's little speeches about taxes don't account for the entire situation. Why demand such high taxes then, Father? Oh, I just ate something. It looked delicious. With the scriptorium closure, the taxes are necessary to make up for the lost income. Surely there's another option. Do you really need to raise taxes that much? Why not ask the bishop for help? Just because you decide to close the scriptorium doesn't mean the townsfolk should suffer. Monastic scriptoria have been falling out of fashion for a century. You didn't plan for the inevitable by preparing other revenue streams? Fuck, that's good. That's fucking power. That's... Holy shit. <laughs> that's concise. Okay. Oh, that's unfortunate. We gotta go for this. The realistic approach, right? Monastic scriptoria have been falling out of fashion for a century. You didn't plan for the inevitable by preparing other revenue streams? Don't put the fault on me, Andreas. These taxes are a direct consequence of your actions after you accused Ferenc. He managed the scriptorium. Kearsall was different, Andreas. Until recently, the monastery had patrons like Lawrence to ke help keep it going. Since then, I've been trying to find other revenue. But the other brothers won't cooperate or hear my ideas, especially Adik. Brother Guy has gone over the expenses himself. Raising taxes is the best way to cover these costs. Hmm. But what about prohibiting the peasants from using the forest? That's a new restriction. Lebkuchen and pheasant. Let's get some pheasant. Man, look at that pie. Holy cow. Pheasant. The forest belongs to the abbey, and the peasants have no right to use it. Legally, it's theft. It doesn't harm the abbey to let the townsfolk pick up sticks. Why bring the issue up with me, then? You don't need to talk... You need to talk to the townsfolk, not me. I don't have a stake in this. You're being a pedantic ass. This is the one I want to say the least, like, in response to him. Why bring the issue up with me, then? Right? But I kind of want to hear what he would say to it. Hmm. Because I do kind of have a stake in this insofar as I care about the townsfolk. It doesn't harm the Abbey to let the townsfolk pick up sticks. Such theft deprives the Abbey of its natural resources. Since the Abbey does not produce anything else, it must be able to sustain itself somehow, especially under such financial stress. Have you no pity for anyone in Tassing? I am more upset to hear the townsfolk have no pity for us. I mean, look at this. Come on, they're, they're doing far worse. I hear they will continue their disobedience by collecting herbs on St. John's Eve. The whole town knows I've forbidden it. The matter is grave, and I will excommunicate anyone who defies my order. You would condemn the town over something so petty. That certainly creates an ultimatum. That's insane. Remains silent. You would condemn the town over something so petty? That is up to them. What a jackass. 
Remaining impartial will be impossible, as long as you're in town. Support me in ending this foolish rebellion. You have a reputation in town, Andreas. You're a successful man, and the townsfolk believe they are like you. I'd like you to convince the other townsfolk, the printer, for example, that this uprising is not in their best interests. The rest of the town will follow, and the peasants will have no choice, no chance to resist. We can end this peacefully. I don't want the town to come to harm. It is a precarious situation, but I understand... It, I don't want the town to come to harm. It is a precarious situation, but I understand your point of view, Father. The peasants have genuine grievances. Why not talk with them and negotiate? I want no part in this either way. I don't have a stake in this, and I don't want to make enemies. The peasants are right, Father. You have been too harsh on them. I won't help you. Damn your plan, and damn you, Father. The peasants have genuine grievances. Why not talk with them and negotiate? I am a forgiving man, but Otto's stubbornness has challenged even me. Otto is past the point of talking, Andreas. That's why I'm begging you to help in the matter. Please, take more time to think about it. I apologize, we must conclude for now. I must excuse myself. I am expected to lead a service at... Compline tonight. Think on what we've discussed, Andreas. I trust you can find your way out. I will, Father Abbot. Good night. Hopefully the killer won't be someone so, like, easily unlikable. Like, <laughs> like Guerno, right? Hopefully. Now that supper has ended, I should return to the commons to find Casper. Oh, right, I forgot. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Hmm. Anything suspicious? Anything of interest? Animal pens? I wonder if you could maybe, by process of elimination, figure out some prime suspects just by keeping an eye out for who and who is not around whenever something goes down. But that would involve you knowing ahead of time, right? That's only a second playthrough thing. Because it could be tonight, it could be tomorrow night, whenever it happens, right? I mean, I guess every night you could just write down who and who is not present, but that's a little much, right? Okay. Anyone to talk to around here? I don't think so. Let's head over to the scriptorium. Anything here? Man, I love the look of this. Just the one little table set up. Oh yeah, we have free access to the library, don't we? Hmm. Yeah, we can't go down there, right? No one up here, right? Could you imagine if there was someone here? Oh shit. I guess I wouldn't be too far-fetched, right? I could easily see Illuminata being here. Just sort of reading the books one last time or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. Head down here. Great. And over this way. Part of me wonders now. Maybe the last murder or whatever. I'm assuming there will be three, right? I'm just operating under the assumption three acts, three murders, right? That makes sense to me. Maybe they're all the same killer? I don't know. But maybe um, the third one will be a desperate situation where we are fingered for being the killer and we have to defend ourselves by finding someone else, you know? Because if, if there's another murder while we're here, like to someone who isn't aware of where we're going and everything, right? We're a, we would be a prime suspect. Hmm. Matthew. Nope, nothing. 
Okay, I think we'll just head out. There we go. We gotta go get Kaspar again. Or see if he's murdered, right? <laughs> Maybe he's gone. Okay. Over here. Good. Through the meadow. Oh, hey, Schlau. Maybe Schlau knows. It was odd, that extended sequence with the cat in the cellar. What was up with that? That was weirdly, like, in-depth, wasn't it? Or was it a dog in the cellar? No, it was a cat. Why was that one so, like, thorough and required for if you went down there? Right? You, there wasn't a... You didn't click on the cat or whatever. It just kind of happened. And we get to see the burning, too. Hey, Atilia. Well, well. You're that artist. The one who lived with the Gardners. Got mixed up in the wonderful killing of that rat, the Baron. Yes, Andreas Mahler. I was just trying to clear my friend's name. <laughs> she likes it. <laughs> she thinks I killed him. <laughs> or played a role. I was just trying to clear my friend's name. You think I care? If a flood washed out the abbey and all the monks into the river, I'd grab the nearest man and dance a weller in joy. Anyway, no time to talk now, fancy man. It's time to call to the fire. Does St. John's Eve mean a lot to you? Call? Do they chant around it and shit? Call to the fire? What? Oh, the Hans, Mama Perkta. Nusa Dane. Case Guad Perti. Vive Nus Domain T. Ha 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 right, I'm going to go. <laughs> Enjoy the evening, Andreas. But if you want my advice, stay not of the stay out of the woods tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. I like seeing her like this though, honestly. Wow. Who is this tall ghost? Who is this? Huh. Okay. Do we know someone that tall? I don't know if we do. That said, the perspective is a little skewed because they're in the background, but that should make them seem almost a little shorter, I would feel. Alright, let's talk to Kaspar last. Hey, Carl. Evening, Andreas. Say, how do you like the bonfire? We built it nice this year. Big and sturdy. It's a fine setup, Carl. Excellent work. It's not as impressive as the ones I've seen in Nuremberg. It's a fine setup, Carl. Excellent work. I know we can't compare to where you come from, but we still give it our all. In the celebration of the light, who prepared the way for our Lord? Anton, you remember Andreas Mahler, the master artist? Yeah, I seen him around town. Son, be polite. Ugh, hello, Master Mahler, how are you? I am well. Thank you, young man. Fine, I guess. It hasn't been... It hasn't been great time back at Nuremberg. Now this is a well-raised kid. Does as he is told. Huh. Fine, I guess. Hasn't been a great time back at Nuremberg. I... see? Anton's a good boy. Let me tell you. A bit of a rascal, as you can see, but he's got... He's got a good head and a good heart. Likes to hide it, though. <laughs> Dad, will you stop? <laughs> Easy to rile you up. Just like your mother. How is Helena? She not attending the bonfire? So what do you think of the festival, Anton? I don't really know them. I think we missed them the first time through somehow. So what do you think of the festival, Anton? It's fine, I guess. I like the fires when they are lit. The mountains get a twinkle. Like the stars. I don't like when people get drunk and rowdy as the night goes on. They get into fights and all. 
But your dad keeps the treble away, yes? Oh? Anyone in particular? Anyone in particular? Well, uh, not as much lately, but Martin used to get in trouble. Anton's got a good eye. Martin's been a solid fellow once he's once he came back, but he sometimes drinks too much. He's calmed down lately, you know. He used to be kind of a shit. Language boy. God doesn't look kindly on blasphemy. But those are your words, Dad. Best you don't quote me. Quote the scripture instead. It's better for your soul. You listen to your father, Anton. This will be remembered. I will. I will. I do. Jesus. Hey, what did I just say? Don't let your mother catch you with that mouth. <laughs> and how is Helena? Is she not attending the bonfire? She'll join us later. She went with Martha to dip her toes into the stream and to pick some flowers for the garlands and wreaths. It's important to hold the tr to hold two traditions. You're right, especially with the times we're having. Wreaths, dipping into streams. Aren't these more pagan customs? Let's just inquire. Not so, Andreas. St. John the Forerunner walks the streets at night, blessing any door with a wreath on it. Isn't he dead? How can he walk around at night? Ooh. A cult. The veil between the spirit world and ours is thinnest on these nights. All manner of spirits walk about. That is the power God can provide for his most beloved disciples. He can't. It's like a figure of speech. Dude, let's go with the occult reactivity here. I feel like it might be appreciated. The veil between the spirit world and ours is thinnest on these nights. All manner of spirits walk about. Evil ones? Demons and devils? i never seen any, though. And you won't have to, if we're careful, my boy. The bonfires will frighten them off, with the help of the Lord. It's why we have the feasts and cele celebrations. Well, I'll let you get back to it, then. It was a pleasure. Until later, Andreas. Bye. Okay. Over here, let's speak with Werner. Andreas? Salutations, Andreas. Most wonderful to see you here. I see you two have met. What do you want with an inventor? I make all manner of mechanical contraptions filled with gears and levers and other such delights. Andreas here is a man of the mind. Why he shouldn't have... Why he shouldn't... Why... Why shouldn't he find interest in my work? For all the use it is. The mind of the inventor exists to create, to build, to go one step further. One step further toward the garbage heap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, re I'm changing, I'm reconfiguring this dude's voice. A very inspiring thought, Baltus. It makes sense you'd also be rude to your friends, Werner. A very inspiring thought, Baltus. I thank you, Master Artist. Speaking of, have you had the chance to look around town tonight? I imagine the sights could also be inspiring to your artistic mind. Tessing certainly looks cheerful with the decorations and bonfire. What do you mean? Yeah, it looks cheerful with the decorations and bonfire. <laughs> Indeed. Look at their peasant ingenuity. Consider the bonfire itself. It is built to allow the air and the heat to flow through it at great speed. And how it roars. It's a clever piece of construction. But Otto's a clever man. Yes, and Otto's a clever man. It is a feat almost worthy of a university degree. These people have natural traditions. They have managed to figure out many clever things without even the most cursory education. It is knowledge that hails from preceding generations. Lived experience passed along the chain of time. Not quite the knowledge of a rigorously educated mind, perhaps, but nonetheless useful. Our ancestors are smarter than us. Not individually, but taken together. You don't need a university education to be smart. I just don't see the use for any of it. 
Huh. You don't need a university education to be smart. Of course you would say that. Neither of you know these people like I do. God has assigned them their place in the order of the world for good reason. There is some merit in learning from the peasants, the new learner, given their understanding of herbal remedies. Their traditions are profane. Consider the Eve of St. John, tainted by their pagan rituals. It's an affront to Christ. St. Elysius warned against precisely this nearly a thousand years ago. St. Elysius? Patron saint of goldsmiths, Bishop of Noyen Tournai, worked tirelessly to convert the pagans of Flanders to Christianity. Oh shit, we would know about that bit. Where'd this newfound piety come from? You're really wound up about this, aren't you? Where'd this newfound piety come from? Don't pretend to know anything about me. I've been on the pilgrimage to Aachen. Aachen? Located at the western edge of the Rhineland, Aachen is, a, an, is an ancient city built around thermal baths. It houses the remains of Charlemagne, as well as many other relics. Whoa. I have visited the Marian Shrine and stood in the presence of those holy relics. Marian Shrine? An ornate golden reliquary in Aachen Cathedral. It holds the swaddling clo clothes and loincloth of Jesus, the Virgin Mary's dress, and the decapitation cloth of John the Baptist. Holy hell. To be in the presence of St. John the Baptist's beheading cloth was an experience I will never forget. John the Baptist, prophet and forerunner of Jesus Christ. As his name suggests, he was responsible for baptizing Jesus. He was beheaded at the command of Herod... Antipas. Antipa. I've seen the reliquary several times on my visits to Antwerp. <laughs> yeah, fuck yes, we should say that. I'm glad you've had an experience. Your family must be proud. I'm familiar. Thank you. I've seen the reliquary several times on my visits to Antwerp. It seems you... It seems to have done you little good. Perhaps you should visit again. Now, now. Let us keep pace, peace in our hearts, as brothers in Christ. We are here to celebrate. I'll let you continue with your evening, then. Good night. A <laughs> very good night. Oh, and do come by my workshop, Master Mother. I would love to exchange ideas. It would be my pleasure, if I can find the time. It would be my pleasure. Splendid! Until then. Mahler. Maybe this dude's a killer. Maybe he just hates everybody. I don't know. Didn't I already inspect the fire itself? I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Yeah, pretty all the same. We did. Hey, we can talk to Till. Fuck yeah. Hey, Till. Hello, Master Mahler. Evening, Till. Enjoying the festival? Very much so. I perhaps feel a tad old for the more active side of the celebrations, but I enjoy the sights and sounds. Did you know the word for the summer solstice le leads back to the Romans? I thought you didn't read Latin. I may have heard that, yes. I thought you didn't read Latin. Maybe he does now. <laughs> I picked up a few words over the years, and I still had a mind to put two and two together. Admirable, I must admit. Yeah, it really is. It's nothing, Master Mahler. Mainly proverbs and the occasional word. Hence, solstitium. Such as it looks at this time of the year, the sun rises higher for a long time, and then it stays there before falling again. A fitting allegory for the great cosmic arc of mankind, rise and fall. But to make up for that, a d dancing, leaping songs, joy and mirth. People do seem elated. Although I don't think the they came, I don't think the same applies to Abbot Garneau. But can all this really keep away the decline? People do seem elated. 
Although I don't think the same applies to Fa Abbott Garneau. Otto's counting danger. I agree. Going against the decrees of the Abbey like so. The festival has always had a re rebellious streak of jest and mockery. I don't see it as sacred as some. The church would disagree. We are to honor a major saint. It has to be sacred enough for the church not to condemn it as heretical. And what are we mocking? And what are we mocking? The fools of the community, most like. The vices folks get up to, especially those more important than us peasants. Overall, I think it brings people together. Ah, I wish I could read more about all this. Well, with the Abbey selling books from their library. I hoped I could get some for myself, but it proved to be far too expensive. Klaus and his printings have proven to be of more use, and a fair bit cheaper. Have you come across any interesting tales? Does this mean you've read the Twelve Articles? Have you come across any interesting tales? I have indeed, Master Mahler. Or... I didn't quite understand everything. The text was in Latin. It was by a Roman named... Oh, fuck. Is that a typo? No. <laughs> named Strabo. <laughs> and it was about geography. That's why I noticed it. I don't believe I've had the chance to read anything by him. It was a fairly complicated read, I must admit. The book was about many kinds of barbarians which also included the Reiti tribe I read about years ago. The people who lived on this very land before the Romans arrived. He called this place Rautium, Rautium, and described it as a cluster of daub huts, and its people, hostile and warlike, only interested in hunting and fighting. Huh. What is that? What kind of hut? Some kind of hut. Daub? Is that a word? There was something about Manus and his sons, but I couldn't understand a lot of it. In any case, when the Romans came, most of these locals were driven out, but some were captured to work in the fields and the mines. What happened to the locals who were forced out? Or were they mining? What happened to the locals who were forced out? Dude, this is lending credence to Old Smokey for me. Right? What if Old Smokey is one of them? Right? Old Smokey lives in a fucking hub. What if he's a descendant from one of those Romans who got cast out and he's here looking over the town and uh, passing judgment on people and shit or whatever, right? What happened to the locals who were forced out? No idea. I would imagine that after the Romans were driven off when their... that the Roman... that after the Romans were driven off when their empire started falling apart, maybe the barbarians came back. But, were they really the same people, or nomads from somewhere else, from elsewhere? I guess we may never know. Thank you for the quick history. I'll let you get back to the festivities. Enjoy yourself tonight, Master Mahler. Until later. I'd like to. Alright. Should we check in with Brigida and Martin, I think? Sure. Sorry, I'm gonna take a quick drink. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Why, Martin, look who it is. Good evening, Andreas. Andreas, you're staying for the festival, I hope. Of course he's staying. Who would miss this? Especially after you burly boys built such a beautiful bonfire. A burly boy like me would do anything for you, love. Couldn't help myself. <laughs> wow. Okay. Brigida, Martin, you're both feeling very festive, I see. Stare at them blankly. <laughs> what the fuck? Huh. You're both feeling very festive, I see. The food, the fires, the dancing. It really is a night to enjoy. It's to honor the anniversary of the birth of Blessed John. A vigil for he who prepared the way. Yes, yes. And he'd have liked 
everyone to have a good mood in their hearts and good food in their bellies. Mm. As a hermit who wandered in the desert, living off locusts and wild honey, you probably wouldn't agree. I'd like to live off some wild honey myself, if you catch my meaning. <laughs> oh, man! <laughs> um, so are you going to heed Otto's call and go into the forest? Snort. I want to snort. I'm going to snort. Fuck it. Martin, please behave. Yes, dear. I'll pray to to God to relieve me of my unclean thoughts. <laughs> You'll get no dances tonight if you continue this impishness. See, Andreas, this is the kind of difficult married life I have to deal with. Oh my gosh. They're so fucking sweet. Jeez, I hope one of them doesn't get murdered or whatever, right? Maybe someone has it out for Martin. Hmm. Quite. So, what's next for the evening? Will you heed Otto's call and go into the forest? It must be a burden. So what's next for the evening? Will you heed Otto's call and go into the forest? No. I'm really not looking for trouble. There's enough of that going around. Right. I heard you've a tendency to get into trouble. With the drinking and brawling. Even though you supported him earlier during his speech? And you, Brigida, not gathering any herbs? And you, Brigida, not gathering any herbs? My place is by Martin's side. The word of the abbot is the word of the church. It's improper to go against the, church, the word of the church. Only slightly less improper than all the time you spend with Veronica. <laughs> Ellipses. Oh, Brigida, I'm sorry. It was a joke. It came out poorly. It's good for the heart to have cherished friends. It's fine. Do you think Brigida is bi? Do you think Brigida is fucking bisexual? Maybe. That's kind of the way, like, this situation is, like, coming off to me. I'm not sure. Because remember, she she does go, or she would in the past, go, like, skinny dipping with Veronica in the waterfall on this day. In past, right? And she does seem to, like, genuinely like, um... Martin and all that. Maybe. I don't know. Andreas, I was about to say, the bonfire is enough. We will dance until our legs deign to waver. Right, Martin? Would not miss it for the world. That's delightful. I hope you have a great evening. You as well, Andreas. Until later. Man, I'm so glad about Martin. Okay. I mean, you know, horrible what happened, but I am glad that Martin turned over a new leaf. All right, Ill Peter. Good evening, Andreas. Nice to see you here. Grandpa, look who it is. Hey! Oh, the artist. You're still around. I thought to stay and enjoy the festivities. Ha! You call this a festival? <laughs> you haven't seen nothing yet. You're not going to tell the story again, are you? You kids need to learn it by heart. Those perch that will run you down. Ah, uh, this is about the wild hunt? Little Peter, I'm not sure I'm really interested in old tales. Ah, uh, this is about the wild hunt? Yes, it draws near. <coughs> Heed my warning. Grandpa, you're getting agitated again. It's not good for your health. Nonsense! I can outlive any bastard out there! So, uh, where was I? The Wild Hunt? I'm guessing you were about to regale me with a tale about the traditions of these mountains. The Wild Hunt? Yes! Did you bring your mask? No. Sorry. I didn't realize I was supposed to bring one. I'm not really that interested in partaking in local traditions. I didn't realize I was supposed to bring one. The fools I have to suffer. Man, who are these people? Who who are the people dancing around? Maybe one is Hetty? Maybe one is... Oh yeah, I don't see Yorg with Ava. Maybe Ava is up there too. Right? Unless they're down somewhere else with like... Standard Peter. I'm not sure. In fact, maybe one of these people are Standard Peter. Right? Maybe it's Clara, Ava, Standard Peter, and someone else? We'll have to get a good look at who who at who is and isn't here. 
For the fools I have to suffer. The masks are to protect us as we banish the witches and spirits into Perchta's path. She punishes all humans she finds in the woods on St. John's Eve, since only witches are out in the wilderness. Anyone caught will be turned into animals. No one but a priest can turn you back. Well, I guess I can imagine a worse punishment. Oh no, to be brought low to a mere beastly existence. Well, I can imagine a worse punishment. You joke, artist, but you won't be laughing when Perchta finds you. Maybe that cat was someone who was who became an animal, huh? Remember the one that we fed? Stay indoors tonight. If you want to come outside, stay within the light of St. John's fire. At least St. Satia blesses the herbs in the forest this night. And the women will gather the herbs, regardless of that bastard abbot. <laughs> it's certainly important to stockpile some for winter. Thank you for teaching me more about the local traditions. Great story. Thanks for teaching me more. Eh. <coughs> hey, Big York. Who? Huh? You'll grab some of those ashes with you after the bonfires died down. Fine. Clever. The ashes will be good for the soil in your garden. What are the ashes for? Let's use our heavens and earth reactivity here. Clever. It'll be good for the soil in your garden. You're a smart ass for a city boy, eh? Best we drive the cattle across the ashes, too. Keep them from disease. Now that story time is over, how are you enjoying the evening so far, Andreas? I've spoken to a few other people here. Very enlightening. Fine enough, although I'm feeling tired. Very enlightening. It's the best time to spend time with your friends. Have you heard anything interesting? Purr, gossip! You two are like that burner in the forest. Smoky, that's the one. Huh. You're kind of familiar with them? I think this is the first time I've heard anyone bring him up. Maybe? Always nosy about other people. Interesting. I've also been invited to have dinner with the abbot. I guess the talking never stops. Ignore him. Yes, it has been fun to hear what other people think about St. John's Eve. Huh. Yes, it has been fun to hear what other people think about St. John's Eve. Ignore him. Maybe you'll get a few dances as well, eh, Andreas? I'd rather not. Hmm. I hope I'll get the chance to dance with my dear. Can't see why you couldn't. Big Yorg is right there. Yes, Big Yorg. Uh-oh. Maybe they're not... <laughs> Maybe one of them is bi, but I don't think Veronica is straight. Is Veronica straight? Oh, goodness. Veronica might be into Brigida. Well, I shouldn't keep you from the night's celebration. Until later. <laughs> All right. Let's try and get an idea of who this is dressed up, right? Okay. So, oh, there's Ava and the little bean child. And there's Clara. Where is Standard Peter? One of these may be Standard Peter. And oh, there he is. Who the fuck else could it be? Hetty is probably one of them, right? I don't see Hetty. I feel like this might be important for any investigations going forward, you know? So, probably one is Hetty. Another one is probably... Oh, Cot! I don't see her around. Right? Yeah. Okay, who all else is over there? Johan, right? Is Johan here? I thought that this was Johan, but I'm not sure it is. Right? So one of them may be Johan. Who else is over that way? I'm not sure who the fourth person would be. Huh. Or is this Johan? No, I think this person's too young. Yeah, I'm not sure. And I'm, I'm assuming that Ulrich's wife 
is tending to, um, or not Oryx's wife, but, um, the midwife, that she's tending to the pregnancy, right? Oh, one is probably Lucky? Lucky is not here. Right? Yeah, I don't see Lucky. Okay. I think we got him figured out then. Or at least who it's likely to be. Oh, also, Endris is not here. Or is it only, like, single people who do this? I don't know. Which would totally make sense if, if Endris were one of them. Oh, you know what? There's also the tall person in the background. Right? But they may not actually be that tall. They may just come up to right here, and there's like a pot on top of their head with the sleeves. Whoever they are, they're having a good time back there, even by themselves. <laughs> Alright, sure. Well, I suppose when next we come back, we'll advance the scene and speak with Kaspar, right? We spoke to everyone, and everyone had kind of a lot to say. Frankly, I kind of prefer this to, like, running around town trying to figure out, Oh shit, did I talk to you? Did I talk to you? Do you have something to say today? Right? I kind of like having them all together at once. Right? Okay. Until next time, please take care of each other.